The 37th Hong Kong International Jewelry Show and 7th Hong Kong International Diamond, Gem and Pearl Show return with an eye-catching array of diamonds, gems, pearls and jewellery. As HKTDC's first two physical trade fairs since the pandemic began, the fair has attracted close to 440 passionate exhibitors amid travel restrictions between Hong Kong and the rest of the world. Some countries sent their local representatives to the events, including Germany, Switzerland, the United States, India and Italy. Italy even had its own pavilion to promote its high-quality, unique designs. I'm representing this Italian company named Giovanni Ferraris. They choose to make their titanium collection by hand. Titanium collection is a very, very difficult way to make jewelry. I can say less than five in the world who can make the jewelry by titanium. They try to tell the world we are still able to make it uh, made in Italy. Italy is very famous not only for the quality but also for design. All over Italy, we have different districts with different traditions from the northern to the southern Italy, different in terms of technique, of details and also of stones, gems and uh, diamonds they treat with. As the global economy begins to recover, the export value of fine jewellery is returning to pre-pandemic levels. Hong Kong's exports of fine jewellery recorded a sharp increase in the first five months of 2021, with an 82.3% year-on-year increase to a total of 28.65 billion Hong Kong dollars. It's a sparkling performance, with Hong Kong maintaining its status as a trading and sourcing hub in the jewellery world. The Italian Trade Commission led a group of Italian companies to take maximum advantage of the HKTDC's fairs, promoting their on-trend designs to the Far East market. We are here to support the jewellery sector companies, which is very important in our country because it counts more than 7,300 companies and 31,000 workers. We really consider Hong Kong as a priority market. It is also not only our fifth client from all over the world, but also it is important for re-exportation to China mainland and to other countries in the Far East. And uh, we were very happy this year to join the exhibition, not only in person, but also on a virtual basis. We already had some feedback from companies that have already been selling a lot during the first day show. So yes, the positive reactions are already in. This year, for the first time, the fairs were open to the public, as well as extending their customary welcome to industry buyers. Some 17,000 jewellery lovers seized the chance, attending expert-led seminars and a jewellery smart bidding session for a quality selection of finery. Confidence in the retail market has been regained. One exhibitor, Sunny Sky Corporation Limited, brought particular charms to entice the wider range of consumers. At a time when the jewellery business remains seriously affected by ongoing travel restrictions and quarantine measures, the diamonds, gems and pearls here at the fairs still present glittering opportunities for exhibitors and suppliers alike. I'm from India. We are manufacturer of single cut diamonds and full cut diamonds. We basically, we concentrate on B2B customer. But because of the pandemic, the border issue, so international buyers cannot come to Hong Kong. So it is difficult bit for us. We always hope that show will be good. 
We participate every year and uh, yeah, of course we will participate in next year too. It's developing and are doing better and better. And it was not only high art jewels. Running concurrently was the physical edition of the International Sourcing Show, showcasing lifestyle products. In all, from gems to innovative products, the events create a golden opportunity to make connections and do deals.